I can't believe it. Am I about to agree with Justin Peters right now? Justin Peters posted something on the prophetic movement on Twitter, and Twitter broke. The tweet was seen over 112,000 times. And I actually have to agree with him on this one. I'm not a big fan of Justin Peters. I find him to be overcritical, especially on the charismatic movement. We don't want to dampen people's enthusiasm for the power of God and him actively meeting people in their lives, especially in today's time. But Justin seems to genuinely love God, I can tell that. At the same time, it seems like he has more of a watchdog or a discernment ministry. Not a big fan of those. We should be more on the offensive, doing things for the kingdom. But it is appropriate to call out false teachers at times. I can see where this originated from. Justin is in a wheelchair, and he has attended many hearing, healing revivals, but never really got his miracle. Now I believe in miracles. I've seen a few in my day. I have a guy in my church, Brian LePew, who was paralyzed for over a decade and he was healed supernaturally. I will provide the link in the video description below if you're, if you're interested. This is a medically confirmed miracle, and my church happens to have several doctors and surgeons, so it'd be easy to be shot down if this wasn't authentic. Actually, my pastor was a surgeon and was supernaturally healed of a torn rotator cuff injury instantaneously. But we also do need to have teaching on what happens when your miracle doesn't happen, the way that you hope that it would manifest. Because we live in a sinful and broken world. Let me say this before we get into the tweet. There is a tendency to only listen to voices in our particular stream of Christianity. This is dangerous and creates an echo chamber. We're only hearing things that go along with our worldview. My undergraduate degree was in social sciences and I was trained as a researcher to think scientifically. I take that into my role as a Christian minister. I never check my brain at the door or just go with the flow. I test and, and question everything. I was like this even as a child. My mom said I used to drive her crazy with questions. So I'll often check in with Calvinists at times, Reformed theologians, or even Satanists at times like John MacArthur and I can learn valuable things from them. I want to look at Christianity from every single angle, not just hearing things that are familiar with my stream of Christianity, because it creates weakness. So let's get into Justin's tweet. I'm gonna bring it up right now. So you're gonna see here, Justin Peters, has a lot of followers on Twitter. Yes, I am praying for Israel, he says. But this war brings up serious theological questions for charismatics. This is just another long, long list of global impactful events in the last few years, and none of the charismatic prophets saw this coming. So he's talking about Israel. None. Nada. Zero. Why didn't they? All these people, prophets, claim to hear God regularly. God tells them where to eat and who to talk to. He tells them the people in the audience that should give them money. And he gives them words of knowledge about shoulder problems, ringing ears, and sore backs. Sometimes, with like Sean Bolts, God even gives the people their names of their social media accounts and physical address. So he's making fun of Sean Bolts here. Um, Sean gets this information from God, and he is literally staring down at his smartphone, God's preferred method for speaking to Sean, apparently. So Sean Baltz had a controversy a while ago where it's alleged that he was looking on people's social media profiles to get information about them. Whether it's true or not, I don't think we'll ever know, but it's possible. I'm not a big Sean Baltz fan. Why didn't he bother to tell any of these prophets that Hamas was going to launch a deadly attack on Israel and murder scores of innocent men, women, and children? Why did God not tell the prophets that this was going to happen so they could give Benton, Benjamin Netanyahu a heads up so that Israel could be ready for it? And they obviously were not. People are not only being killed right now, but brutalized and tortured, especially women. The images and videos coming out of Israel are absolutely gut-wrenching. So God speaks to these prophets about bum knees, 
miracles, money, and users' names, but not really. Okay, so <clears throat> problem that I have with Justin is he being like very critical on this whole situation. At the same time, he has a really good point. Why was it that the prophets did not predict COVID and they did not predict the biggest war event that happened this year? They didn't. None of the prophets caught this. I, I, I went through every major prophet's yearly 2023 predi predictions for the year and none of them called this out, okay? Now, they're saying that some people associated with Mike Bickle and the fast that he had kind of had alluded to generic events happening in Israel, but nothing Pacific. This was a big attack. So we must ask ourselves, why didn't anyone? He's right. Why didn't any of the charismatic prophets pick this all up? And God's own son's hometown was going to be attacked in the biggest terrorist attack since 9-11. And why didn't any of the prophets predict COVID as well? I know this is going to get me in trouble with a lot of charismatics, but we need to ask ourselves this important question. Why? Because I feel the prophetic movement has went off the track in the last few years. We see this with COVID and the elections. They were all wrong. They said that COVID would come and go and be gone by, by the end of Easter, and they were wrong. They said that Trump would get two successive terms, and stuff and it's possible there was funny games and business that went down there but the same extent they didn't prophesy that they were all wrong and very few repented okay so i'm under the big persuasion right now that the prophetic movement needs to be reset redone people need to go back to trying to hear god's voice accurately and really having a solid relationship with god there were some that repented of the Trump prophecies, such as Jeremiah Johnson, Chris Vallotton, Sid Roth, to name a few. But the whole prophetic movement needs a reset, except for people that have decades worth of accuracy. And mostly they are dead, like Kim Clement and John Paul Jackson and Bob Jones. I'm cringing right now. I really hate to use his name, but he was accurate, strangely enough. That guy was the oddest person you could imagine. But Kim Clement and John Paul Jackson both prophesied Trump's term before it happened. Kim Clement prophesied two consecutive Supreme Court justices being appointed back to back. And Kim Clement prophesied 9-11 before it happened. But we need to get back to solid orthodoxy in Christianity, especially charismatics and Pentecostals. Reading the Bible and prayer. Character over gifting spending time with God daily, devotionally, and learning to accurately discern his voice by keeping a journal on the things that you hear from God and then testing it, going back. So I'm not like a Justin Peters. He is usually trying to prove that every prophet is wrong. And in his case, probably he's going to pronounce everybody wrong all across the board. What I'm doing is different. I'm trying to separate true prophets from false prophets which in the end times, Jesus warns us that false prophets will be abundant. So I think we need to call out false prophets and then commend those who get it right, like Kim Clement and John Paul Jackson. But in time, in the time of the prophets, they had schools of the prophets where people studied for decades and they discipled under other mature prophets. And that's what, they, that's what really needs to be done these days. Everyone these days is a prophet, a YouTube prophet, but these people have very little training, very little testing. I've studied under three people that I feel are uppercase prophets with an uppercase P, and I sat under them, learning and watching them and imparting their anointing onto me and learning to prophesy with somebody that is providing guardrails for you, helping you see when you're right, when you're wrong, and, and adjusting and tweaking things as it's needed. And so that's the type of prophetic training that's needed. We often have these trainings in churches, which I just cringe when I see this, where they, they, they line everybody up in a line and then they have someone sit across from them and then they have them close their eyes and give people prophetic words. In my, in my, my understanding of things, either you're a prophet or you're not. Now, I think it can be developed 
but like I said, by mature prophets, walking with them and, and getting trained by them and then learning with them. Derek Prince often said the charismatic church got into a movement which he called Christian fortune telling, where everybody was going around asking people if they wanted a word from the Lord, like they can prophesy on demand. And some very experienced prophets can do that and do it accurately, but most of them can't. And Derek also said in the time of Elijah, there was a total of 1,200 prophets in the whole book that tells the whole story of Elijah. But there were only two real prophets, Elijah and Micaiah. And he said the odds aren't much different today, possibly even worse. I agree. False prophets are abundant. True prophets are rare. And when you do find one, you want someone that's been tested through decades, not a year or two on YouTube. Please, no comments in the videos of Touch Not the Lord's Anointed. That is the most misused verse in the whole entire Bible. And it refers to trying to remove someone from power. I'm not attempting to do that at all or remove any prophet from power, although I wouldn't be opposed to doing it in the future. But we should test prophecy. Why? Because God commands us to. And if we don't test prophecy when he's asked us to, then we'll be accountable and judged for that. A big quote that I love to put forward, if we don't test prophecy, we will end up despising it. Why? Because it will lack credibility and get flaky. We need to test prophecy. And in hundreds of churches that I've been to, I've never, I very rarely, maybe once or twice, seen people actually weigh and test prophetic words. But the New Testament calls us to do that. God tells us in his word not to despise prophecy, but to actively promote it. Speaking of promoting prophecy, I'm going to do just that. Before we close, the overseer of my church, Ken Fish, along with my pastor, is hosting a conference in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to bring it up right now. It's called the Fusion Conference. If you can attend it on person, they're still tech, uh, selling tickets. It's next week. And they also have an option to attend online if you're interested. So these are tr uh, trusted prophetic voices that I trust in the prophetic. Um, it's probably only one on that list that I have a problem with, but the rest of them I feel like are legit prophets. And, and to be, if you want to be blessed in the prophetic, I would sincerely recommend attending this event. Craig Keener, I love him. I'm reading his book on miracles right now. Ken Fish is very, very sound very trusted voice and so and stacy campbell as well had prophesied that um the pope that's in office several years when she met him when he was just a cardinal prophesied over him and said you will be the next pope okay so people that have a long history of trusted prophetic words that are accurate and straightforward so if you want scan the qr code on the screen or go on to kingdomfusion.org and try to get your tickets because it's going to be a real good event. Thanks for hanging with me today. I just like to close every day telling people what Christianity is. It's three things. It's to love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul. It's to take that love that he's given you and to love other people. And then, thirdly, to go out into the world, preach the gospel, the Great Commission, to preach the good news, baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Be blessed. <laughs>